Hello, Hello. everyone. Hello there. Well, <laughs> hello. All right. So welcome everyone to the next section. This is the first section in room two. And we have Leon and he'll be talking on what he has learned three years in teaching Motic. So just a brief um, intro about um, background about Leon. So Leon has been teaching people how to use Motic for quite some time. And he's from Germany. He has been working with Motic since 2018 and has been to every Motic conference. Currently, he's the co-host of the Morticast and a fellow Motic enthusiast. So today, um, Leon will be teaching us all he has learned and his experiences, why he has been teaching Motic. So over to you, Leon. Yeah, thanks for the... Step up the stage. Perfect. Thanks for the kind introduction. Hello there, everybody. Um, yeah, my name is Leon. And to start this off, I've created a poll, which I'd like everybody to participate in. Because I've wanted to ask you if you have ever done a modic training, plan to do a modic training, but haven't actually done it, or if you received a modic training. That's just something I'm quite curious about. So we have three roads already. Oh, number four coming in. Oh, nice. Yeah, thanks for the for the votes. Um, I see that 50% of you plan to do a modic training, but did not actually do it. 30% have done a modic training and 16% have received a modic training. That's quite interesting. Thanks for that input. So let me share my screen with you all. And let's get started. There we go. Perfect. Um, yeah, I think we're good to go. I will start again and reiterate a bit about me. My name is Leon. I'm 24 years of age. I'm from Hanover, Germany, and I'm working with Leuchtfeuer Digital Marketing. And I've been working with Mordic since 2018, so it's been a while. And that was marking my beginning to the art of contributing towards the open source community, which I haven't done before. And I have been doing ever since um, in various roles, like I've led team design for this Mordic Conference Global. I led the Google Season of Docs 2020 and acquired Favor, who is now leading the team education, which I've done before. And besides from the direct community, I've also speak in the Mordecast. If you have heard about it, that's great. If you haven't, be in for a treat. The Mordecast is a podcast with the latest and greatest of the Mordic world. And after this talk, please take a second and yeah, go to Spotify or your favorite podcast app and give it a quick listen or uh, subscribe to our podcast. That would be quite good. Um, if you have any more inquiries about me, here's my email address. You can also find me on Slack with my name, Leon Altmans. Um, if you have any questions, messages for me, please drop them. So let's get started. First of all, what will this talk be about? That's a question I want to answer. This talk will be about my personal experience with Mautic trainings and giving Mautic trainings. Like I put in before, it's just my personal experience, what I have experienced in these about three years that I've been teaching Mautic. And if your experiences vary and if you have other opinions, please let me know and let's get in contact. We will be talking about goals of a Mautic training, what you want to achieve, how to set goals, what is a smart way to set goals how to structure a Mordic training, um, what usually spark the most interest, and where do my clients tend to struggle the most, what's the yeah, difficult topic. That's also something I want to talk about. Also, I want to talk about who this talk is for. And I'd say I'd struggled a bit myself to define that because it's pretty hard to say. I don't want to exclude anybody, but I guess it's, yeah like for morticians planning on giving trainings, which were 
50% uh, in Nepal or morticians who were already doing trainings, which were like 30% and want maybe some new put um, other perspective and just, yeah, want to know what I've experienced and maybe get a new breath of fresh air. So let's start by goals of a training. There can be various goals of a training. It's depending on the client. Just as I said, there are multiple ways that a training can be, yeah, which goals can be set for a training. It could be just a basic overview of everything. I know the devil's in the detail. Nobody gets to know everything in a training. Um, but it's a more broader thing, more, more aspects about Mordic. There also can be intense learning of a single aspect. Let's say the client is super interested in campaigns and then you structure your training around campaigns or forms or building emails, setting up email sending with Mordic. There can be uh, goals of a training which are to really intense singular learning of a thing of Mordic forms, campaigns, email bales, whatever is the interesting thing for the client. Also, what I've had is solving specific problems with the client. Um, maybe he's using Modic, the client already, but he wants to, to see how a professional or somebody who's giving trainings would solve problem or would solve a problem with you instead of them needing your help. You give them a, yeah, a solution and they just use the solution, but they don't really understand how you came up with the solution. So there can also be cases where the client has a problem he wants to solve, but he doesn't want to um, just get a ready handmade solution for him. He wants to be in the solution process. Of course, there can be even more goals. It's just like a couple of things that I really consider when setting up a goal, um, but there can be a lot of more goals. But I'd say always be cautious when talking about goals. You need to set clear boundaries and expectations with a client. Do not set unrealistic expectations. You rarely know how well your client uh, will be understanding Mordic and its concepts before the first session. Maybe you need like the first one or two sessions to even get to know the client better and get a rough overview of how well the client is um, yeah, learning Mordic. At, but at the moment when you're setting your goals, you only vaguely know what the client is capable of um, because you usually set the goals before the first session or at the start of the first session. And let's be honest, no one masters Mordic in a single training, in a single session, in a single variety of session. That's why you need special attention to your goals and especially how you communicate them. Um, one of the most common misconceptions is that I've experienced is that after a Mordic training, that people become Mordic professionals knowing every single bit and piece and every inch that Mordic offers, which is highly unlikely. I mean, I've been working with Mordic for four years now and there are always new niches, new things that I learn myself. So you need to set clear and realistic expectations towards your goals. Just a small side note talking about that. Just ask your client what he's most interested in. I know it's super, super basic and it's something I guess a lot of people already do, but I didn't do it in the first couple of trainings that I've given. And then I've just started at the beginning, asked what he's interested in, what his expectations are, and then set the goals with the client together. And it's easier to set expectations together with client form of filling training that both sides happy a clear goal which you're working towards to together then the efficiency of the training is much much higher let's come to structure of a modic training there are lots and lots of things you need to consider speaking of the length of a training overall the length of a single session the amount of sessions um, the time in between each session, the topics to cover, the order of the topics. They're just lots and lots and lots and lots of things you need to consider. But don't worry, we will go over them step by step and I will give you insight on every single 
yeah, aspect that I've just named. First of all, let's talk about the time structure. Time structure is the groundwork. It's immensely important that you think about the timing beforehand. You need to define the overall length of your training because everything depends on the length of the training, the content per session, the intensity of each session, um, how many sessions you will have. Everything will be determined by the overall length of your training. For me personally, I found out that six hours total divided into three parts with about two hours per session is what is working very well. Um, of course, that varies depending on the type of training that you do and the client's wishes and the set of goals that you created together. But usually um, six hours, three parts, two hours per session is what I perceive to be efficient. And talking about efficiency, something you need to consider is breaks in between the sessions or in the sessions, let's say. Because Mautic training is heavy input, really heavy input. So don't be shy on breaks. I usually have like five to 10 minute break in the middle of the two hours. And um, I use that break to either like get a quick rest if I'm pretty exhausted, um, get a cup of coffee, something to drink, or even have a little small talk with the remaining clients that are in the call. I've experienced it in a lot of uh, occasions that maybe there is a training that isn't one-to-one, -one, but one-to-multiple, like four, three, or even more people. And there's someone who is a bit shy. And when three others are leaving and he's the last one in the call, then it's, yeah, happened more than often that he starts or she starts to ask questions that she thought would wouldn't be smart or that it would be stupid questions and she did not want them to ask them in front of their colleagues and i mean there are no stupid questions and that's a nice niche aspect of taking breaks that you get the chance to have a little small talk get to know them better a uh, better and just build a deeper connection with the client and occasionally just have breaks if you need them let's say after having a heavy input session talking 45 minutes about complex campaigns, then you just need to like two to three minutes, get a refuel, get something to drink and then continue from there. Because I mean, if it's heavy input or exhausting for you as the trainer in this case, it's even more input for the one receiving the training. And if you have like a very intense input session, just give them a second or a minute to breathe and understand and perceive what they've just learned. Because if you give them input on input on input on input, they don't have time to understand what you're saying. And you're just talking to talk and not talking to make them understand. And they're just listening to listen and not listening to understand. So just have after heavy sessions or heavy parts, ask them if they need a second, if they have any questions, like make it a little bit of breathing room. And that worked wonders for the quality of the entire session. Talking about sessions, there is a certain time between the sessions. I mean, I've split them into three parts. So I say don't spread the sessions over a prolonged period of time. Just don't. Try to have at least two sessions per week, ideally three per week. But it's hard if you have multiple people, they all have a lot of uh, things in the calendar to get all those people together. And um, I'd say two sessions per week is ideal. If you have more sessions planned, aim for two, two week, two per week, because I've planned all three sessions in a week. That is an intense week, but it's a good week. And um, yeah, the more time there's in between the sessions, let's say you have four sessions and you uh, spread them over one session per week, then it's an entire month. And in between each session, the client will need time to get back into Modic because he won't spend all week between the sessions doing Modic. He maybe will spend a couple of minutes. If you are lucky and have a client who's very interested, he will even spend an hour or two. But the more time the client will need to get back into the mood of Modic and the more time essentially goes to waste. 
if you spread them over a long period of time. So I'd say two per week if you can. That's an uh, inf efficient way to spread the sessions. Yeah, let's uh, continue. Now we covered a bit of time structure. Let's go over to topics to cover. There are a lot of topics you can cover in a session, in a training. And don't be shy. Don't be confused. Don't let it get to your head. There's just so much to Mautic. The devil is, devil is in the detail. So it can be super confusing to choose and determine which topics to cover and to which extent you should cover the topic. So let's head back to the basics, back to the beginning. The topics you want to cover always depend on the goal of your training. I know I've repeated myself a couple of times, but setting a goal in at the start of the training will give you a, like, a clear expectations and a clear goal you want to work towards to, and you can vary the topics you are giving and explaining in the session so you can reach the goal. But if there's no special interest, they just want the usual, let's learn Mordic. I try to build this baseline, usually contacts, including contact import, because a lot of clients want to import contacts themselves. I mean, the mostly the initial import, if they have a lot of contacts speaking, one to two million, I wouldn't even dare to touch the Mordic importer because it's just not capable of handling that amount of contacts. I would always use direct database injection. Um, but if they have like smaller lists of customers from their shop system or something they want to import using CSV or something like that, you need to explain to them beforehand how to do contact import. Also, segmentation is super important. Forms is... 70 to 80 percent of the time important some clients do not want to use modic forms which is okay so we don't have to cover that top too intensely campaigns are super important and also emails this is basically the baseline i work off if you cover these topics efficiently and deeply enough for the client to understand you have a well set baseline to to work off speaking of baseline Let's continue to the content of each session. I usually structure, as I said before, my trainings into three different sessions. And now I'll give you a deeper dive on how I structure the sessions. I, rough, I have a rough um, outline, which I reuse for every session. And it goes something like this. In session one, the first session, I lay a basic foundation of marketing automation, inbound marketing and Mordic basics. Second session, deeper dive into Mordic. Third session is a task I give the client and more Mordic topics. That's the rough outline I use basically every time. And let's hop into the first session and talk about the content of each session in a, in a higher extent. So session one. Give me a second. Session one is basically a first get to know session. We lay a basic foundation of marketing automation and inbound marketing. It's something I talked with about uh, to the client, um, whether he already knows about the concepts of marketing automation, inbound marketing, and just wants to learn Mordic as a tool, or if the client is new to the world of Inbound marketing, marketing strategies, marketing automation, and just wants to yeah, get into the world of that. So I usually just take the first minute of the session and explaining that because it's super important groundwork. This, these are just two concepts you need or should at least partly grasp before starting your marketing automation journey. I also give a first glance into Mordic. I show the backend and I start working on the baseline I've mentioned before. Um, and I usually briefly, very briefly explain what is located behind every point of the venue because it's uh, <laughs> another like stepstone that will help in the later stages of the sessions, let's say session two and three. If you go into like broader modic topics and you explain tech manager and stages that it's not something they've never heard of, but you've already told them what will be 
located and what they can roughly expect from stages. And it's just something that helps with the flow of the, the later sessions. And um, side note, always tell them to ask questions. Um, you can decide if you want them immediately or if they should write them down and ask you the questions at the end. It's something you can decide whether you want to have the questions like on spot and answer them and maybe get out of your, your explanation flow, um, but be a bit more interactive or if they should write it down and just cover all the questions at the end. Um, something you can decide on client to client and training to training. That's basically the first session. The second session, I start by asking whether there are questions that popped up between the first and the second training session. Because in a lot of cases, um, they think about the uh, training, the session, the, the first one afterwards a bit more, and they yeah, pop up questions, and then you give them room to ask them. Or maybe if you have a really interested client, and he or she took the time between the first and the second session to work with Mordic themselves. Um, maybe there they experience something they do not understand or new questions popped up. And this is a good room to let them ask those questions. Um, second session is uh, basically a deeper dive into Mordic after you answered the questions. And either we continue working on the baseline I've mentioned before, explain more menu to uh, menu points so going broader and covering more topics on Mordic, or we lay special emphasis on a certain topic workflow um this is always depending on the original goal of the training if the client wants to learn everything about campaigns you should invest a second session and uh, talk about campaigns if he wants wants to uh, get a broader overview of Mordic, you shouldn't spend two hours just talking about campaigns because there's so much more to cover. And um, yeah, depending on, on this, this, this decision, either less topics will be covered, but more intensely, or more topics will be covered, but not as intense as they could be covered. That's basically how I use my second session. And session number three, I start with a prepared task using already covered topics. I create a problem the clients need to solve and um, I prepare a little cheat, cheat sheet with tips and tricks nudging towards a possible solution, um, but I do not give them the direct solution. I consider about 20 minutes of time for the task, mostly five minutes for the explanation and for another 15 minutes or 20 minutes to actually do the task and afterwards five to ten minutes discussing their solutions um, talking about where they got stuck and where they had problems and i offer them my solution and um, it's always interesting to see how um, it impacted their solution how you explained certain things beforehand if you went into more detail between the connection of campaign forms and campaigns, they will most likely try to find a solution if the problem includes, the pro includes these aspects using the tools you gave them. And you can see that um, their solution will most likely be close to your possible solution because you explain Mordic in a way that you use it. And um, yeah, quick tip always mention the task at the end of session two, just to have your client mentally prepare. I know it's just, it's, it sounds a bit weird, but if you give them a little heads up, hey, in session three, we will start off with a little task, don't be afraid, um, it will be easy, there will be help, don't worry. Um, it usually goes a lot smoother and they don't fall into a state of panic in the third session when, oh, now I need to solve a task I wasn't prepared. I thought this is just a training and not a workshop. Um, to, to counter that, I just give them a little heads up in the second session. And it's something I can give you as a tip. If you want to implement a task and give them like a little room to do a, a small workshop, let's say, Always be upfront, be friendly, and be helping, and never ever show a sign of madness or being upset. I know that's also something that you probably already knew, but 
even if your client took four hours and you invested four hours already into talking about campaigns, then you give them a simple task about campaigns and they miserably fail and they have no idea where to do. You need to be friendly and you need to try to analyze to where the issue is rooted and why they w weren't able to, to solve the problem you gave them. Was it too hard or did you forget to explain certain things and didn't give them the right tools in, to work with? Or is there just something you missed and the client didn't really understand but said he, he would but um, didn't really? It's just a way to see if the client actually understood what you're saying and not just listening to listen, but listening to understand. It's like a little test, but um, it's usually greeted with a lot of fun and them being happy to yeah, actually apply the knowledge you gave them and then have somebody yeah, look into it and give them tips on the solution. That's something I found to be very valuable. And the rest of the session, because you're not spending the entire session on task, I used the reminding time to either a deep dive into a certain topic and go more into detail on a certain topic or to cover more topics that were left open. Like I said, and we go narrow and cover like one topic or two topics intensely, or we go broader and cover more topics, but cover them not as intense. Or what's also possible is to cover a workflow the clients wants to use Mordic to solve. Maybe do not give them the direct solution, but work on it with them. And um, another quick tip, which is, yeah, easy, and you already thought about it, I guess. Ask the client where his interests are in the session. Maybe he wants to lay special emphasis on a topic or repeat a certain topic because uh, the client realized um, there's something he didn't get and uh, something that isn't fully understood yet. It's just something you go to the client and you ask them, hey, is everything all right? Is there anything you want to lay special emphasis on? You want to talk about again? We need to repeat something or can we just go uh, into broader things or more into topics which are new? This is something that I also started like in, let's say a year ago or something, and I know it's it sounds a bit simple, but it improves the quality of a training session a lot. So that's what I had to say about how I structure my training sessions. Let's come to topics that spark the most interest. Something that I also just can talk about my personal experience. Um, but what I found to be very interesting or where the clients used to be very interested in is complex campaigns and um, explaining those complex campaigns. If they have like a gigantic campaign tree in front of them and they're just completely overwhelmed and oh, I would never understand, never be able to do that. And then you start explaining them why you do certain things and how it's structured and where the connections are and why you do this, why you do this, why this exists. And it suddenly doesn't feel complex anymore because it's just logical and you just as plain how it's built, um, you will be surprised how happy the client will get because the client underestimated how much the client learned already. And it's just a moment of them realizing, hey, I can understand that. It's just not as overwhelming as I thought it'd be and they will be grinning and smiling. And it's a point in my training sessions that will always spark a bit of happiness and then uh, showing interest and yeah ah, i understand that um i didn't expect to understand but um it's not as possible uh, as uh, complex as i thought and i'm able to understand it and it's just a nice point to have in the sessions another point which sparks a lot of interest but is not as fulfilling let's say it's just emails there's just so many aspects to cover regarding the topic of emails scheduled emails, different between normal and segment mails, um, how to use the builder, how to, what to expect when you're scheduling emails, how to send emails to segments. There's just so much around it. It's not as, let's say, happy creating as complex campaigns and them understanding that they're 
uh, understanding more complex campaigns, but it's just something that uh, sparks a lot of interest because it's something they tend to use a lot. Also, forms, because Mordic offers a lot of possibilities when it comes to forms. Let's say complex forms, progressive forms, difference between standalone campaign forms. Um, it's just a topic that when the client is planning to use uh, Mordic forms, sparks a lot of interest because there's just so much about creating forms, working with different types of fields, which fields are capable of what, what actions are there. It's just another topic that sparks a lot of interest. And last but not least, segment. It's just something that is practical. A lot of clients just need well done segments. And it's always a point of interest on how to build segments, segment filters, possibilities of connected conditions, what happens when you add um, contacts to a segment via campaigns, or if you add them via filters. Um, we'll be talk about that later as well, if you're interested in how segments work. And um, that's also just a point of interest I experience. And last but not least, I will tell you where my clients tend to struggle the most, and it's basically always the same. It's just same, same, but different. First thing, you might already guessed it, cron jobs. Cron jobs are bad to explain because usually the other, the client is not as technical. Um, I often have marketeers as client and explaining cron jobs and the basic function of cron jobs and what cron jobs modic needs is very, very hard because it's a concept that needs to be grasped to uh, modify and improve Mordic, especially if they yeah, host Mordic themselves and want to yeah, learn it, host it, use it themselves, explaining how cron jobs work and which cron jobs are smart and which details are about cron jobs and what you can do. It's just a lot. And most clients just struggle with it. Next struggle, email builder. I know the new builder is better than the last one that we had. The old builder was kind of gruesome, but the new builder also isn't up to par with what is available on the market. There's just so many things that are not as good as they could be and should be. I know it's way better and I love the improvement on it, but there's still a lot of steps to go. And um, that's also something a lot of clients struggle with, especially in combination with templating. That's a point of struggle. Next one, campaigns. It's one thing to understand campaigns and how they're theoretically built. It's another thing to completely build their own campaigns from scratch. Um, that's a point where I've experienced a lot of struggles, but not because it's as complicated, but because it just needs a bit of time and experience to get used to and get better. Next one, the configuration of a Mordic instance. Um, let's not talk about this technical infrastructure to you need to, to run a Mordic, but how you can configure Mordic in the backend. I mean, it's not as complicated. There are some complicated or more complicated aspects to it, but mostly it's very understanding, um, but there's just a lot and a lot and a lot of possible options, a lot of things you can turn on, turn off. And most new clients just are super overwhelmed. And last but not least, scheduling emails is also something clients struggle with at first because um, they publish emails, they do not unpublish emails um, and people get older emails. It's something that a lot of clients just need a couple of of yeah, let's say extra miles to, to fully grasp because a lot of clients actually use the email scheduling and um, explaining it is one thing, giving them the experience and see where they have issues and where they need improvement is another thing. So to put things together, I say clients tend to feel overwhelmed quickly and never ever as the one who's giving the training underestimate how proficient your knowledge is compared to them. 
if you're using Mordic, let's say casually or more intense, for years and years, and maybe just one or two years, you know a lot of things that are super common to you. And you're like, yeah, this is how this works, this is how that works, is easy principles. But if somebody is new to Mordic and doesn't have that knowledge, it's a fact and something you need to take into consideration that your knowledge, your general knowledge about how Mordic works, it's so much higher than theirs. And don't take anything for granted. Don't just because you explained something once doesn't mean the client understands it. Just because you've been doing it that year, uh, that, that way for years. That's something I want to, uh, yeah, tell you all if you're planning on doing training, never underestimate your own knowledge. And that's basically it. I hope you've got some new input. Um, thank you for, for listening. If you have questions, feel free to uh, yeah, ask them now. And um, thank you for listening. That was my talk. So now Favo should come on stage. But I don't see her. Ah, there she is. Perfect. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> so Perfect. that doesn't mean let me turn on my. So if you have questions, just post them in the Q&A slot you can see on the right. All right. This is a question's time. If you have any question, this will be the best time to ask them. Okay. The Q&A. Let me check that. Okay. In the absence of any question, I have some questions that I would love to ask. Um, so I'm just going to post them here. So what would be your recommendation for someone that never did a training before? Uh, I'd say just be calm, just, yeah, be, be secure and, um, don't get too nervous. I mean, you're teaching something that you have proficient knowledge in. There's no need to be super overwhelmingly concerned and it's, okay to not know a thing or two and if the client has a question to just postpone your answer to the next session or uh, just answer them by email you don't have to know everything on the spot it's just okay. you, nobody knows everything yeah yeah definitely all right that was, i have another one yeah why did you implement a tax for clients in the third section doesn't that make it more of a workshop yeah it makes it a bit more interactive, I say. Um, okay. I just recently, let's say half a year ago, started it and um, just did it as an experiment. And I've come to the realization that it really improves the quality of the third session and also gives a bit of room for the client to yeah, prove their knowledge and show what they've learned and also maybe show where there's still something they need to learn. and that they didn't understand something fully yet. And yeah, it just helps to get um, get that across. Yeah. yeah, so what you're saying is that it helps for you to know if the client really understands and if the clients have questions, that also creates a room for them to ask questions and know their level of knowledge on yeah. that particular. All right. Perfect. All right. Sounds so uh, I guess we are coming towards the end of this section and it's been wonderful hearing you talk about uh, your experience teaching Mortic and uh, I'm pretty sure like every other person who has joined also like yep. benefited from this. Uh, yeah, this has been a great session so far. I really enjoyed this talk and I'm sure Thank every you. other person did. I can remind of everyone here. Yeah? So do have yep. a nice day ahead as we continue in the different sections. All right. Bye. Okay. See you later. Bye bye. See you. Let's get ready for the next section that's coming up. Bye. <laughs> bye bye. All right.